Welcome back, folks. In this video, we are going to ask the question, what is DAX? And then when we're done asking it, we're hopefully also going to answer it. Uh, so it's possible that, uh, I mean, it's possible that this is the first time you've been looking at DAX, but it's also very possible that you've been trying to use DAX for months and months and maybe even successfully using it and still had no idea what it actually was. That's entirely possible. So we're going to see if we can answer that question fairly quickly and also walk through a couple of the particulars as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So I'm here in whatisdax.pbix. I'm in the what is DAX tab, and I'm going to ask the question, what is DAX? Well, it's actually quite simple. Uh, DAX is a querying language for building summary tables on demand. So what do we mean by that? Well, in Power BI, we're going to use this get data button to get uh, highly detailed tables of data from all kinds of different state, uh, uh, data sources, maybe Excel, maybe SQL Server, and uh, they'll be super detailed. So we might load um, a sales table that's got 13 million sales transaction, maybe a products table with all of our products, a stores table with all of our stores, even a customer's table with all of our customers, right? And when we're done loading that data into the physical tables of our data model, the DAX engine will build summaries of it on demand incredibly quickly, right? So here, this is an example of what a summarization might look like. Right? So from this highly detailed information, I've created a summary with total sales broken down by city and category. This summary was built from the physical tables of the data model, and it was built incredibly quickly. So uh, what do I mean by quick? Well, uh, and also what do we mean by on demand? Right? Let's say I want to change uh, the way that this looks. I could come down here and click on premium. And as soon as I do that, right, Power BI is going to issue a new summary query and say, hey, go resummarize the data. And uh, just incredibly fast, way less than a second, uh, the DAX engine recreates that summary, now just looking at premium, and sends back the results to get drawn here, right? So it just builds these things super duper fast. Okay, so uh, how does this fit into Power BI? I kind of alluded to it a second ago, but let's you know kind of walk through it. Uh, you're going to get data from any number of source systems, maybe a SQL database, maybe an Excel file. And you're going to use uh, the M engine as a technical name for it, but you can also think of it as the get data button to say, here's where I need to go get data from these different data sources. And every single night, uh, it's going to run and go load that detailed uh, data into the physical tables of your data model, maybe your sales transactions, maybe your product data, maybe all the days in your calendar, right? And then uh, on demand, the DAX engine will build these summary tables that summarize that data. The reason it's going to build them is because once it builds them, it's going to send them to Power BI, which is going to draw them as any number of visuals, right? And so I can like click on something here, right? I get a new summary table, and then Power BI redraws it as this visual right here, just that fast, okay? Uh, by the way, some folks may notice, uh, I say summary table right here. They say, Brian, hey, isn't this just a sum or a table visual in Power BI? Uh, yes, technically speaking, this is actually a, a table visual in Power BI. If I hover over it right there, that's a table visual. But the table visual is a good way of, uh, well, visualizing the results of a summary table, which you can't otherwise actually see in Power BI. Now that a lot of work anyways. So uh, this may sound to a lot of folks like a pivot table, right? And it's kind of a similar idea, right? So with a pivot table, uh, you load highly detailed information into a uh, range and then you use the uh, insert pivot table button to then load it into the pivot cache. Uh, from that point, right, you get these little pivot controls and you can say, you know what, I want to see maybe uh, sale amount and margin amount and break it down by year and by product category and lickety split uh, the Excel engine, the pivot engine, uh, spins up this summarization for you, this pivot table, right? So uh, it's a very similar idea. However, Dash can work on much, much bigger sets of data, uh, handle multiple tables of data at the same time, and it can also handle very complex calculations, things like you know year-over-year -year growth and returning customers and things like that, right? Uh, and also, just a bit of warning, uh, in this whole class, we're going to like uh, strongly compare uh, Power BI and Dax, or I should say uh, Dax and Excel, and, and even though the DAX language and the Excel function language look very much alike, uh, don't get fooled there to very different languages, okay? So back to summary tables, back to summary tables. Every single visual in Power BI has a summary table behind it that was built by the DAX engine, right? So if I've got uh, this page over here on the left, you can kind of imagine all these visuals, right? Every single one of these visuals has a summary table behind it. So over here, uh, where I've got total sales broken down by year and quarter, to draw this line chart, the DAX engine spun up a summary table with total sales broken down by year and quarter. Down here, where I've got total sales broken down by uh, product category and uh, and city, well, sure enough, uh, they uh, the DAX engine 
created a summary table with total sales broken down by product category and city. And if I've got these two cards right here with just total sales and merge percentage, those have summary tables behind them too, as simple as they are, right? And every time a user interacts with the report, right? Power BI uh, issues new summary queries and says, I need new summaries of the data to which uh, the DAX engine says, you got it boss. It spins up these new summaries, which Power BI then redraws as visuals incredibly quickly, right? Incredibly quickly. So uh, Power BI knows how to draw the visuals, but it has no idea how to create these summary tables of data. That's where the DAX engine come in. It's the thing that actually builds these numbers that Power BI then draws, okay? So uh, in summary tables, I want to peek at them for a second. I just want to emphasize sort of one idea here, right? Uh, every data point in a chart corresponds to a row in a summary table, right? So if I've got uh, this visual over here, right? If I look at this very last column where I've got total sales uh, for regular products in the state of Washington, well, that's going to map back to an individual row in the summary table, right? So that's going to be this row right here where we've got regular sales in the state of Washington. And it's that six million and change dollar right there, right? So every single column on here, you can very clearly see it maps back to one row in the summary table, right? So uh, on that note, uh, data points in a visual often don't represent a single category, not a single category, but a combination of categories, right? So uh, this $6 million right here, this isn't sales for Washington. It's not sales for regular products. It's for uh, regular products in Washington. So it's a combination of those things. Uh, which is why oftentimes the same uh, category will show up multiple times. So Oregon shows up here twice uh, because we need uh, multiple rows, one for each combination of state and product tier, right? So uh, same thing down here, like you can see that each one of the points in this particular line chart maps back to one of the rows in the summary table. So if I go to the very end right here, and I'm looking at that bottom one where that's walk-up sales for 2018, it's about 10 million. Well, that's going to be walk-up sales in 2018, 10 million right there. Every single point on here maps back to a row in the summary table, okay? Now, the summary tables uh, have a couple different sections, right? Uh, now, uh, some of these are very technical terms. Some of these are terms I made up because they're useful to me. But either way, I think they're going to be useful to you. So uh, if you've got a summary table, the two big sections are going to be the grouping columns and the measure columns. The grouping columns are going to provide the groups, which is combinations of categories that we want to ask questions for. Maybe we we'll want to ask some questions about uh, regular products in Beaverton or premium products in Portland, et cetera, et cetera. This is going to create all the combinations of some categorical columns like city and tier. So here's all the combinations of city and tier. And each combination is considered a group, combination of categories, right? Now, uh, so we got the grouping columns. We also have the measure columns, right? These are where we have our questions and our answers, right? So uh, here we've got two measures. We've got the total sales measure and the margin percentage measure. And what we've got is for every single row, we have these group metrics, which is the answers for each particular group. So these two numbers right here represent total sales and margin percentage for uh, Beaverton regular products, right? And you can see that all the way down. Also, for what it's worth, I tend to refer to this entire sort of block of combinations of groups here. I refer to that as the grouping breakdown or sometimes just the breakdown. This is just all the category combinations you might want to ask questions about, right? In addition to the grouping breakdown, there's also sort of the metric set, which is just all the answers, right? Just all the answers. So we've got our grouping columns that provide our different groups and the measure columns where we store our answers, right? Now, you may notice uh, I've written the names of these things out in kind of a funny uh, format that you may not have seen before. This is a syntax that you'll, you'll see less in visuals. So you'll see it more in code. Uh, in general, when you are referring to a column in the DAX language, right, you refer to the uh, table that it lives in, and then in square brackets, you put the actual name of the column. Like, so here, this is the tier column in the products table. This is the city column in the stores table. By contrast, uh, with measures, you, you have the square brackets, uh, but you just list the name of the measure. You don't list the table that it lives in. This makes it very easy to distinguish in our code the difference between uh, what is a reference to a column versus what is a reference to a measure. That's just a convention if you were wondering. Okay, so we've talked for a, a while ago, we kind of mentioned and alluded to the idea of summary queries, and I want to explore it a bit uh, more deeply, right? So what is a summary query? Well, a summary query is just an order form for a summary table. Uh, and I should say, this is just another term for a tax query. So when report authors drag and drop columns or measures into a visual, Power BI is going to write a summary query and then send it off to the DAX engine so that the DAX engine can uh, create a summary for it, right? So this summary query, again, is nothing but a request to build a summary table. 
So uh, for example, in the Power BI interface, let's say that I create a, a, a column chart here, and then I drag uh, state into the access, I drag product category into the legend, and I drag total sales into the values. Well, uh, when I do that as a report author, right, Power BI says, okay, in order to draw that visual, I'm gonna need to have total sales broken down by category and state. So it whips up a summary query that looks like this, right? Now this is, you're pretty new to the DAX language, so it looks a little bit foreign, but really you can kind of read it. It's gonna use this summarize column function, which is gonna give us all the combinations of state and category, and for each one, it's gonna calculate total sales, right? So we send this request off saying, we need total sales broken down by state and category. Uh, we send that off, or we don't send it off. Power BI sends that off to the DAX engine, uh, and lickety split, the DAX engine uh, builds it, then sends it back to Power BI and says, here you go, here's that thing you asked for. Power BI then takes this summary table and redraws it as it, or I should say draws it for the first time as a visual, right? So uh, this numeric and categorical information here uh, is actually represented as a chart, right? In this case, it's a column chart, but it could be a bar chart or, you know, X, Y scatter or whatever, okay? Now, uh, what's meaningful here, what's meaningful is anytime you interact with the report, you've probably noticed that every time you interact with the report, the visuals change, that's not too, uh, too crazy, uh, but why and slash how, right? Every time you interact with the report by clicking on a slicer, Power BI is going to detect it and rewrite the summary query, resend it off to the DAX engine. DAX will reprocess it, create a new summary table, which Power BI then redraws. So for example, right, if I click on 2017 here, right, when I click on it, as an end user, you probably notice uh, that the numbers in the chart go down. That makes sense. We're only looking at one year's worth of data and not three. But importantly, up here in the summary query, notice they add a line, right? It adds a line for the year equals 2017, right? So if I, if I uncheck it, that goes away. If I check it back in, hey, there's that filter for year equals 2017. If I set it to 2016, hey, you guessed it, right? Uh, also, if I click on Oregon, right? The numbers go down again because we're just looking at Oregon, but notice up here it adds a line for state equals Oregon. This is true for cross-filtering too. If I like click on walk up here, the numbers are gonna just keep going down. They keep going down because uh, Power BI detects my selection, rewrites the summary query to add that filter into it, sends it off to the DAX engine. The DAX engine spins up a new summary table, sends it back to Power BI, who then redraws it as a visual, right? Does it very, very quickly. Uh, it's it's off, well, not often. It's not unusual for uh, a situation where it actually takes longer to draw the visual than it does for DAX to spin up the summary table because it's just so darn fast. You know, let me turn these guys off just so you can kind of see it. Hey, Brian, do those dots in the code, do those actually do something? No, I, I, I added those dots myself just so you could see what they are. Hey, Brian, is this uh, some special visual that lets you see inside the summary queries? No, this is just a really long uh, DAX measure that I made to sort of simulate it, right? Okay, so uh, we've got our summary queries, right? We've talked about a lot of things. The one thing I want to explore a little bit is what happens sort of in this arrow right here. When we go from a summary query to a summary table, what does that process look like? Uh, what, what, just, what does it look like, right? And uh, the answer is it looks like temp tables, right? Temp tables, right? In the DAX language, we create summary tables. They're built from physical tables, but in the middle is a bunch of temp tables. So uh, here on this screen, we have an example of a very small data model where we only have one teeny tiny physical table, right? And we're gonna build an equally teeny tiny summary table, uh, but to go from here to here to summarize it, right? There's just a ton of temp tables here in the middle. And in this simple example, there's not that many, but as you build more complex summarization, you can have tens of thousands of temp tables there in the middle, right? So in the process of creating a summary table, the DAX engine will generate possibly hundreds of thousands of temp tables. Maybe sometimes it's just like four or five, but other times it can literally be hundreds of thousands, right? Now these are based on the physical tables of the data model. And uh, you can do all sorts of stuff with them. And I should say the DAX engine does all sorts of stuff with them. Uh, it converts them into numbers, it strips them down so they only include certain rows, and it even uses them as filters. And really most of DAX uh, is getting good at creating, manipulating, and processing these temp tables. So when you're writing your DAX formulas, really what you're doing is saying, here's the temp tables I wanna create and here's what I want to do with them, okay? So again, it's worth going through this. It's worth going through this. Uh, DAX is the language of tables. So there's lots of different kinds, right? There are physical tables, which are our sources, right? These are the uh, tables we get when we use the, the get data button here to load detailed table into our data model to be summarized. This is what we will summarize. This is the most detailed version of our data. 
we are going to build summary tables. This is the output, right? This is the result of summarization. This is what gets sent to Power BI to get drawn as any number of visuals. And in the middle is temp tables, right? These are gonna be based on physical tables. Uh, most of the time, there's some advanced places where you're, you don't do that. But for our, uh, our purposes, these are all gonna be based on physical tables and thousands or even hundreds of thousands of these might be created in the process of building a single summary table. Okay, so uh, that's that's a pretty good explanation of DAX. But you know, the one thing we haven't touched on very much is measures. We mentioned them once or twice, but it's worth spending a little bit of time trying to understand those a bit more, which is exactly what we're going to do in the very next video. I'll see you then.